in this particular e-content or the presentation, we will be learning about the ATM. So, what are the prerequisites uh, that we must know before we get into the explanation of this 18 electron rule or organometallic chemistry is, first is, all of us before studying the 18 electron rule should have an insight or an understanding about the stability of transition metal complexes and how that stability can be related with the total valence electron count. Second, we should be aware of the transition metal complexes, how they obey 18 electron rule. At the same time, we should know what are the complexes which does not obey 18 electron rule, but still they are steel. Third is, we should be in a position to appreciate that this 18 electron rule is very, very helpful to determine the thermodynamic stability of any organometallic compound, which helps to understand the type of interaction and their applicability. Now, what is 18 electron rule? First of all, this is an electron counting rule which is applicable for the transition metal containing organometallic compounds and what does it say that any transition metal containing organometallic compound whose total electron count that is the sum of the metal d electrons or sometimes in some cases valence electrons are also taken and the electrons which are donated by the decan should be equal to then only they are considered as the stable uh, organometallic compound. But there are certain preferences in organometallic chemistry for 18 electron rule. What are the preferences? First of all, whatever metal is forming the organometallic compound, they should be electron rich. What do you mean by electron rich? That is, normally the metals which are in their lower oxidation states are preferable for the 18 electron rule. And also the ligand should be good pi electron acceptance. Now, in this 18 electron rule, the most important ligand that we have to study that you haven't read before is the hapto symbol ligand, which is denoted by the symbol eta. The most common example is eta 5 cyclopentadiene. Just have a look at the structure of this compound. What is the main important thing is whenever any ligand Specifically, it is mostly the ring containing ligands have this eta symbol. The superscript of the eta actually denotes the number of carbon atoms which are there in that ring which can donate the number of electrons. There are some of these are the examples of the uh, hapto ligand. There are basically two methods for calculating the 18 electron rule. The most commonly used is the neutral atom method and the second one is the oxidation state method. Now, if we see in the right hand side, out of these two methods, the most important one is neutral atom method. What we do in neutral atom, atom method is, while doing the calculation of your 18 electron counting by this neutral atom method, we first of all consider metal to be in zero oxidation state, right? We do not consider any charge on metal. Whereas, the main difference between neutral atom and oxidation state method is, in oxidation state method, while counting the number of electrons, we always take into account the oxidation state of the metal. But, this oxidation state of the metal depends on two things. First, the number of anionic ligands which are surrounding that metal in the organometallic complex. At the same time, we have to see what is the overall charge of the complex. Suppose, whether the complex is overall positively charged or it is negatively charged, we need to take that also into account. On your left hand side, this is just a table which all of you must be aware of. What it is representing is, it is showing some of the common ligands which are present in chemistry and uh, basically which are utilized in the formation of organometallic compound, whether you talk of low nuclearity organometallic complexes or you talk about high nuclearity organometallic complexes and this is the electron contribution. Uh, why this electron contribution knowledge is important is because this will help you while you will be counting the number of electrons in any organometallic There are some of the examples of 18 electron rule which shows that even if the organometallic complexes does not have 18 electrons, even if they have less than 16 or 17 electrons, still they can be stable. Some of the early transition metals are stable because they are attached with certain type of ligands whose orbitals are of higher energy, so they cannot coordinate with metal d orbitals. Therefore, the number cannot reach up to 18, so it is only 16. So, 
so they are stable at the same time another reason could be these ligands are mostly sigma donors they are not pi acceptors so also they cannot uh, reach up to the number of 18 and their total electron count is less and it is 16 second is there are certain d0 high valent complexes that is there are certain organometallic complexes which are made up of metal which have zero d electrons and they are in their high valence state in that case also as number of d electrons is less so they cannot reach the number of e third category is sterically bulky ligands so if in, in any organometallic complexes you have sterically bulky ligands then the number of ligands which can adjust around the metal is less as a result the electron contribution from the ligand will be less and again that organometallic compound will have lesser number of electrons fourth exception is 18 electron rule cannot explain the stability of organometallic clusters what do you mean by organometallic clusters those clusters which have more than one metal atom suppose 6 18 large number of metal atoms in that case also 18 electron rule is not capable of Uh, explaining the stability of such compounds and last is this organometallic rule is only and only applicable for transition metals it is not applicable for any main group elements or any lanthanide or actinide series organometallic compounds so these are some of the general faqs which are which you should know uh, after reading this 18 electron rule from exam point of view and also from any entrance perspective first is what is 18 electron rule second question is can the 18 electron rule be applied for any type of clusters formed by s and p block elements next third is most important what are the exceptions of this 18 electron rule in organometallic chemistry and the fourth one that is the most important can we say that 18 electron rule and the effective atomic number rule are the same so these are the four questions Uh, which you should be able to answer after reading 18 directly.